In Excel, you can customize the ribbon. You can even add your own custom tabs like this one. This is an order form. I've created an order form tab that lets me print the order or clear the cells for the data entry. So we'll see how you can create your own custom tab using a free tool called Custom UI Editor. That tool is available from openxmldeveloper.org. Just go to that site and in the search box type Custom UI Editor and you can download and install it. You can also go to my website contextures.com and download this sample file or you could use your own file. Just make sure that you save the file as macro enabled and you'll be able to add a custom ribbon to it. So we're going to close the file and close Excel before we can add the ribbon using the custom UI editor. I've opened the custom UI editor and now I'm going to open that Excel file that has the order form. So I'll click the open button and there's my file. I'll click open. Now we can see the file name at the left and I want to add a ribbon part where I can store code. To do that I'll click insert. I could either add one for 2010 or 2007. This file might be used by people who are still using Excel 2007. So I'm going to use that custom UI part. We can now see that part added below the file name and there's nothing in that part yet. There's no code. And a quick way to get started is to let the custom UI editor create some sample code for us. So I'll click insert, sample XML, Excel, a custom tab. It's created some code for us and we can see the different parts of it. The first bit is the namespace. Below that is ribbon, tabs, and it creates a custom tab with groups on it and buttons. A couple more groups. That's the end of the tab, end of the tabs, end of the ribbon, and end of the namespace. We can make changes to this code, but first we'll see what it looks like in Excel. And before I leave here, I want to just validate this code and make sure that it will run correctly in Excel. Up at the top, there's a button for validate. And when I click that, an error message pops up and tells me that this date that's in the sample code is incorrect. I should use this date, 2601. So I'll click OK. And up at the top, you can see the date. So change 09 to 06 and change 07 to 01, then validate again. And now you should get a message saying that the XML is well formed. Click OK. We'll close this program and go back to Excel. Here's that same file in Excel. And now there's a tab on the ribbon called Contoso. That's the name the sample code created. If I click that, I can see the ribbon tab and there's a clipboard group, font and Contoso tools. So these are just the same as the clipboard group on the home tab and the font group on the home tab. If you wanted to copy something or cut something, those buttons work. Then there are buttons further along the Contoso tools, bold, italic, and underline, and those are to run macros. But if I click that button, it tells me it can't run that macro. It's not in this workbook. So we'll be changing the ribbon code to run macros that are in this workbook. I'll click OK to close that. To see what macros are in this file, I'm going to the View tab, and over at the far right, there's a Macros button. If I click that, the macro window opens and I can see the two macros, clear data entry and print order. I'm going to click cancel. So we can see there are some changes we need to make. We'll put a different label on the ribbon tab. We don't need these two groups, so we'll get rid of those. And for this Contoso tools, we'll change that to order form tools and we'll put instead of three buttons, we'll have two buttons here to run our macros. I'm going to close this file, close Excel and go back to the custom UI editor. Now that we're back in the UI editor, we can make some changes to this sample ribbon code. First thing I'm going to do is delete these two rows where we've got the clipboard and the font group. We can see they start here with group and end with the slash and closing bracket. So I'll just make sure I select all of that, press delete, and those rows are gone. As soon as you make a change, you can validate just to make sure everything's still okay. So I'll click validate and everything is still well formed. I'm going to delete these groups as well that are at the end, even though I didn't see them on the ribbon, I don't need them. So I'll delete those. And again, I'll validate and everything's still looking good. So now we have the one custom tab. It's got one group left on it and three buttons. So custom button one, 
two, and three. I'm going to delete the third one because we only need two buttons. So we now have a group with two buttons on it. The label for the group says Contoso Tools. And I'll change that to Order Form Tools. And the tab itself says Contoso. So let's change that to Order Form. Now we have two buttons left. We're going to use one button to clear the data entry cells and one button to do a print preview. So for this one, the label says con bold. We're going to change that to clear. The other button, the label says con italic. We'll change that to print order form. Each button will run a macro. This on action right now is con bold sub and that's not a macro in our workbook. I'm going to change this to the macro that clears the cells. Clear data entry and the on action for the second button. I'll change this to print order. And the final thing we're going to change is the image. We don't want an image with a big B on it for bold. On my website there's a link to a file you can download from the Microsoft site and it shows all the available icons. So I've already picked out a couple of icons and I just have to type the names here. So instead of bold I'm going to use an icon called table style clear which is just a grid with an eraser on it and instead of italic I'll use print area menu, which is a little printer symbol. I'm going to check the code again. So I'll click validate. Everything is still good. So now we can save this. We're going to go back to Excel and make a change to the macros so that they'll run when one of these buttons is clicked. To see how that works, I'm going to click generate callbacks. And this shows you the names that are in this code. So it's picked up the on action macro names clear data entry and print order. And you can see that it's put a callback in for each macro in the brackets after the macro name. Control as I ribbon control. So we're going to add that in Excel to our macro names. To go back to the file, just click the file name and then we can close this and go back to Excel. Back in Excel, the file is open and there's my order form tab. So we've changed the tab name and the ribbon tab looks quite different now. We don't have those other groups. We have one group that says order form tools with two buttons on it. And here's the icon for the clear button that shows an eraser on a worksheet and a print order form button with a little printer on it. But if I click these buttons, it tells me I have the wrong number of arguments. So we need to add the ribbon callback to our macros so that these will work correctly. On the keyboard, press Alt F11. That opens the Visual Basic Editor. And here are the macros, and we're going to add that ribbon callback. So control as I ribbon control. And then we'll copy that and paste it in the print order macro. So both the macros are set up. I'm going to close this and go back to Excel. And now if I click clear, it should clear all these blue cells where the order information is. So that one works. And this button for print order form should open up a print preview of the order form. And there it is. So we could check that and then click the print button up here if it's ready to go. So you've created a custom tab in this workbook. And if you open a different workbook, so if I start a new workbook, it doesn't show that tab. It only shows it when the order form workbook is active. So if I switch to the order form again, the custom ribbon tab shows up. I'm able to use it in this workbook where we have the macros that are run by these buttons. For more Excel tips and tutorials, and to download the sample file from this video, please visit my Contextures website at www.contextures.com.